to lose my patience or not. I can feel my blood pressure rising, heart rate accelerating, getting very angry and frustrated. Alright guys, Flatmeister here. I got really angry when I saw this article. I sort of vented and then <laughs> I thought right, I'm going to sit down and talk calmly. Because, oh, this... So yeah, this Detroit Become Human has been dragged through the mud, just like a load of other games. It's funny because you have um, SJWs like Matt Lease, who's going, oh, games need to... Oh, and a lot of other SJW-esque people. I don't know, games need to tackle more mature adult themes. And then when certain games do, and then they whinge and complain. All Lives Matter. Oh, they complained about that in Mankind, he, uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. At E3 this year, when Tim Surratt's, um, the last, uh, the last night. Yeah, the last night, set in that cyberpunk universe. And then he had to apologise for... He didn't have to apologise, but there's tweets that he made back at the 2014, sort of within the beginnings of Gamergate. Well, anyway, that that uh, his game, The Last Night, that's covering mature themes of what happens when a dystopian future is created because a, a certain ideology has gone unchallenged and... Um, sounds relevant, doesn't it? It sounds quite... Uh, close to the bone people complained they complained about Cuphead being racist it's like fucking stupid like no Cuphead's not racist so the the latest casualty so to speak is Detroit Become Human so this uh, this article on One Augie Gamer saying basically the media basically the normies people that don't understand the medium of uh, of, of gaming Right. So uh, Detroit Become Human, the the media is en masse attacking uh, attacking the game for apparent child abuse. And activists are calling for the game to be banned. They're calling on Sony and Quantic Dreams to ban this game, to self censor, or to just yeah completely be censored. So if you don't know, um, David Gage and Quantic Dreams, they make um, choice. They make choice-based interactive cinematic uh, games. It's like an interactive movie. It's got branching storylines, branching um, outcomes, branching endings. There's, it's like a web of outcomes and the story can branch off i mean you had fahrenheit or in the u.s it was called indigo prophecy um there was also heavy rain uh which was on the ps3 and then i think they they remastered it for for next gen and then they did beyond two souls and now they're doing detroit become human uh, but it was funny though in heavy rain wasn't there a serial killer that um that kidnapped uh children it kidnapped uh, sons away from their parents. Um, I've seen like the ending on YouTube because like, uh, I, I played a bit right, um, when a friend had it. Um, so yeah, the serial killer he puts like a parent through like a trial. They have to go through several trials and work out these this pu these puzzles. They have to make sacrifices in these trials. Certain. You know, physical sacrifices on their own bodies to unlock an next um, clue to track down their son to prove that how much they love their child. Um, that's what the serial killer, the origami killer, in Heavy Rain was called. You know, to, to test um, you know, whether this per this certain parent will make the sacrifice to to save their son. And again, children are killed in that children can can die so um i i re just before the uh, making this video i watched the trailer and it's funny people are going on oh, oh there's no context there's no this that and the other i'm like there's plenty of context in the trailer it's a uh, an abusive father who owns um a robot they're like a sort of domestic robots they use for like uh, cleaning and sort of general house um activities 
Uh, so in the trailer, it makes it clear that this father is completely unhinged. He's yelling at his daughter the fact that he's annoyed that his wife has left him for uh, some richer man. And he's ta he unfortunately takes it out on Kara, the uh, the android, the, the, the house, the sort of nanny slash domestic uh, robot. And takes it out on his daughter as well, physically. And it, the trailer shows the multiple outcomes, the multiple choices that you can have. You know, the, the trailer shows even inaction can have consequences. All actions have consequences. You know, choices and, and actions have consequences. And I think it's very important for this game to, to cover mature themes. The other day, me, Crumple, Point, Switchpoint, and uh, Nerdwaffle, we did our first episode of the, the Flat Pack, our new video series. We spoke um, a bit on uh, our first episode was pushing the boundary. Should or should not games push the envelope, push boundaries? Um, is there a limit to what you can do in the video game medium? I mean, video game industry is on par with Hollywood. I mean, it's overtaken Hollywood. Oh, it comes. Oh, oh. It's overtaken Hollywood. If this, if these things can be done in movies, why can they not be done in games? Again, and I said this on Twitter when I found out this article. People like non-gamers need to realise this. And there's the SJWs as well that are complaining about this, just because a. Uh, you know, just because a developer or an artist or a creator is exploring themes doesn't mean that they endorse them themes. And also, they need to get away from this notion that video games are for children. Get away from the mindset that video games are a toy or something for children. No, they're for adults. A lot, pretty much most games now are mature rated. Because that's the target audience. That's the, the demographic. Enough with this oh, inclusivity. Certain creators should be able to create what they want. If you want to cover some really, um, like yes, I agree. Certain subjects, like with you know child abuse, to um, cover things. You're going to cover a taboo topic or subject. You cover them with with respect show, you know, show respect for that for that topic um you know not exploitative so anyway on this article so um people are saying that detroit become human was already classified by many gamers as propaganda for multiculturalism diversity and sjw politics um i've heard whispers of this but i mean really i'm psyched for it i, I really love the idea of um of ai and from like the trailer bits that I've seen of this game, it really goes into like like a oh what was that bloody Will Smith movie, not I Am Legend, um, AI wasn't it called AI, iRobot that's it iRobot, and they um at the very beginning it was the the three laws of um, robotics Asimov's uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, laws of robotics that. Um, and I think that's one of the themes that David Cage is um, is exploring in, in in this story of the three rules of robotics that a a robot must um, must not harm a human or allow in with inaction uh, must not allow a human to come to come to harm a robot must obey. If it doesn't conflict with the first law, and also a robot must defend its own um, being as long as it doesn't conflict with those other first two rules. Uh, so I like that it's exploring these themes of AI and robots that, are, that you know that these robots are sort of breaking beyond their programming and are be actually becoming more human than humans. And again, like Blade Runner, kind of. Um, touched on those subjects as well you know like though um so anyway with this liberal agenda stuff again i had whispers of this but i've not noticed it at all i'm psyched for the game
So the game is still kind of fire for those espousing social justice warrior viewpoints with the media and some politicians claiming that the game advocates and promotes abuse. What did I say? What did I fucking say? In previous videos I've said about MPs, politicians, getting control, being able to have, like if they get control and dictate what you can and cannot play or what creators and artists and developers can and cannot create. So the YouTuber Censored Gaming did a short video under four minutes covering how the UK, uh, UK tabloids attacking Quantic Dream's game and calling for censorship of Detroit become human. And it's disgusting. I mean, the Daily Mail did a stupid hit piece. Where they really mi misrepresented the game. They're, they're making it out like you're the one that's committing violence against the child. No, you're not. No, you're, you're controlling the android. It's important for these... Um, stories to be told what if take uh, what if um what if uh writers and, and david cage or, or any other employee uh, that works at um quantic dreams what if uh what if one of them shared with with david cage that they were physically abused or emotionally or sexually abused as a child they shared that story with their employee and said, look, I want, and, you know, gave them that idea, like, I want to tell my story. Hmm? Does that occur to you, anyone? That maybe some artists want to um, tell a story from their point, from their perspective. Make them feel that they're, uh, that they're heard through their story, through, through a fictional story. Being able to express themselves. Did that did that ever uh, th um, did that ever come to you? So anyway, the Daily Mail quotes various individuals that are decrying the abuse fe uh, featured in the game, including Andy Burroughs from the NSPCC, the Child Protective um, uh, Child's Charity. I mean, people know child abuse or any abuse against anyone or any violence against anyone in the real life is wrong. I just, do I have to make that clear? Yeah, violence against anyone is wrong. He says, any video game that trivialises or normalises child abuse, neglect or domestic violence for entertainment is unacceptable. Well, I don't hear you saying um, about any other movie or um, TV show that's had that. Or about Game of Thrones when uh, in what season, was it season one or two? I can't remember what fucking season. When um, Alfie Allen's character, fuck, what's his name? The name has gone from me. Fuck. So yeah, what about in Game of Thrones when Theon Greyjoy, played by Alfie Allen, when he um, kills that, uh, was it the blacksmith's son? It shows a corpse, a burning corpse, tied up onto the ramparts of the wall at... Uh, um, at the Stark's house, at the Stark's castle, in Winterfell, and he's claiming, "Oh, I've I've killed Bronn." Um, Stark, I've killed Bronn Stark, but he actually had killed some other, like the blacksmith's son, and he killed a little boy, and burnt his body and left him hanging from the walls. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear, didn't hear anything. No, no complaints about that. No. Because guess what? Yeah, it, it's a fictional world. If it's you, if it's doing it in in a respective way, I've got no problem with them covering this. The long-winded article in the Daily Mail also quotes Tony, uh, Tory MP Damian Collins, chairman of the Culture, Media, Media and Sports Select Committee, who explained that a game like Detroit Become Human could plant the seeds of domestic abuse. Ah, oh, dearie me. This is why I don't get why why is there why does there need to be members of parliament to do with art like oh yes I'm the member of parliament of art and culture fuck off you don't need to be paid for that shit it's not planting the seeds of domestic abuse it's complete horseshit you do not know what you're talking about because you do not understand the medium Damien Collins you don't understand the medium how about you do a bit more research so anyway he says 
it is completely wrong for domestic violence to be part of a video game, regardless of what the motivation is. Domestic violence is not a game, and this simply trivialises it. I worry that people who play this, who themselves have suffered abuse, will use this game to shape the way in which they deal with abusers. It's dangerous to plant the seed in people's minds that the way to deal with abusers is to use violence against them. It's counterproductive and could put them in even more danger. Could put who in more danger? What, the abusers? Well, then again, yeah. Um, uh, members like the, uh, the UK government and the BBC are known to cover up um, paedophilia within their ranks. You know, Jimmy Savile, another paedophile bastards. Ow. Oh. Right. So what 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 what's wrong with um, in fiction? It's not going well. Like I said, that point I made about well, did it occur to anyone that maybe one of the one or many more of the game developers that work at Quantic Dreams are perhaps sharing a story that of um a personal um situation that happened to them when they were a child. They're sharing that with their team. And they're going. I want to tell my story within this video game medium. I want to tell it within this this game that we're developing. Did that occur to you? That they're doing it within a video game. It's counterproductive. That if you saw someone physically abusing a child on the street, yeah, you wouldn't hesitate to smack the shit out of that person. Defe to defend a defenseless child. you would kick the shit out of that person I'm disabled and I would fucking swing my crutch around what's over there and get it so uh, yeah Tory MP you don't know what you're talking or any of the members of parliament you don't know what you're talking about so shut up the criticisms have spawned from the following trailer depicting some of the choices available in the game which include the android and the little girl being abused by the unhinged father like I described earlier some individuals have called for censorship for the censorship of the more problematic scenes in the game or for the game to be outright banned. I just I cannot believe this, right? So um Childline founder Esther Ransom stated, I called upon Sony Interactive Entertainment to think again and withdraw this game, or at least remove this scene where a virtual child is put in life threatening danger. If you don't, real children may suffer. Really? really you're concerned more about a virtual um fictional depiction of a child rather than actually saving real children where are your priorities oh right esther ransom where are your priorities you're trivializing oh no in fictional media what about in real life my stepmother used to physically abuse me and her sister uh, her um and her young daughter who was about the same age as me she would encourage her to physically abuse me she used to hit me when i would uh, hadn't actually done anything wrong my sister was uh, my stepsister was so manipulative she was so manipulative that once I was watching TV, this must have been when I was like five, six years old, seven years old, I was sitting watching TV, minding my own business. And in walks Sarah. She sits down on the sofa with her favourite doll with grey, that had grey wool, wool, and wool um, strand hair. And she had my dad's hairbrush. And I was like wondering, what's she doing with the hairbrush? still watching TV and I saw she's tangled all the hair in the hairbrush and then she goes mum mum so and um so he was in the she'd just come out of the shower she goes up to the bathroom door and she says mum Andrew's just wrecked my doll he's just put the hairbrush in the hair and I'm like uh no it didn't I didn't. I didn't do this. And I was saying, no, I didn't. But she, she was smacking me and hitting me multiple times. My dad was at work, unfortunately, so he didn't witness this. 
She was a manipulative bitch. And she did this loads of times. She would um, sue my stepmom. Would um, she smack me more time? You know. Yeah, you know, she she physically abused me when I was a child. It was physical abuse. And how would how would oh I've just like hypothetically if it was me yeah. You know, but how is tangling a hairbrush in a doll's hair a smackable offence? Not even smackable. Like she hit me multiple times. The punishment didn't fit the crime, even though I didn't commit said crime. Sharing is caring. <sighs> Sorry, I'm uh, really pissed off about this. So Esther Ranson, you don't know what you're talking about. How about you save actual children Oh, right. Google News has since been flooded with articles about Detroit Become Human depicting child abuse, from cinema blend to bleeding cool, oh god, bleeding cool, and from game zone to comicbook.com. I mean, I, I read bleeding cool, and they, I read their article, and they're like, uh, mm. the, well, the headline to their article was, Detroit Become Human includes a scene of domestic abuse, and people are perhaps reasonably unhappy about it by Madeline Rusciutio. Sounds like a type of uh, meat. Proscutio. Prosciutto. <laughs> so she's basically repeating a lot of what all the other um, articles that you're reading. She goes, uh, because the subject matter is, well, a bit dicey, I'm not posting it directly here, but you can watch the trailer and she leaves a link. And then in brackets, she goes, yes, yes, complain about people needing safe spaces and trigger warnings in the comments. But I like to be nice to people who've had a rough time of it and might be affected by watching that trailer again. If you really need to see it again, you can. I'm leaving that choice up to you instead of letting our st site start auto playing it for you without giving you an option. Close brackets. Jesus Christ, have a like... Well, you think that low of your audience that they're going to go, do you need a safe space, trigger warnings and stuff? There's nothing wrong with sharing, um, yes, like I said, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharing some uh, compassion about the, and empathy about the, the subject, but I know it's within a fictional world. But yeah, she repeats a lot of the same stuff. But she was saying about, oh, the the game isn't the only one that, the, the only game that's used um, violence against people children or women in their trailers to promote their games last of us 2 had violence against women which i did a video on that there was context but but in this it's saying you know here at the end she goes it goes but because the trailer used that scene to highlight the game's sophisticated decision making and consequence web it comes off cheap no it doesn't it shows that the stakes are high your choices matter and the choices have consequences inaction has consequences it doesn't come off cheap at all i was really sort of taken aback by the trailer and i'll leave a link to the trailer well i'll leave a link to to these articles as well in the description um she goes so on the, the Bleeding Cool article, she's going, Well, I personally do not think the game needs to be pulled from shelves. If I were Quantic Dream or Sony, I'd issue an, ap issue an apology at this point. Oh, okay. Maybe donate some proceeds from the game to a charity designed to help children who suffer from abuse. Oh, okay. There are tons of those out there, and Detroit Become Human has poised to be a hit since it was announced at E3. Yeah, but the whole game isn't about child abuse. That's just one story in the many story arcs that are within within this game. It's covering a multitude of very mature, heavy themes. So, no, they don't need to apologise for people's um, outrage. Remember when people got pissy about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the, the, the airport massacre? Remember, no Russian.
people going, oh, how controversial. And I was like, maybe donate some proceeds, but rather than virtue signal, um, what's your name from Bleeding Cool? Madeline Rashutio, are you donating money to uh, Child's Charity? Hmm? Hmm? See, a lot of them virtue signal, they don't um, back up what they claim. Who, who knows, David Cage and his team perhaps already had planned or have done it, but they haven't declared it publicly because why, why do they need to declare it publicly? They can go, oh, we're, we're donating money to um, to child protection uh, charities. So anyway, back to the One Angry Game article. Sorry, I'm going all over the shop. So anyway, The Sun ran a sensational headline titled Most Disturbing Video Game Ever? Completely ignoring that games like Agony, Scorn, Resident Evil 7 and Outlast exist. A lot of them are either like psychological horror or there's like quite gory bloody horror or there's you know there's psych psychological horror metro criticized creator david cage for poor judgment while bleeding cool said impose conditions such as an apology from sony and quantic dreams and donations to help resolve the situation like oh what just <laughs> what so yeah bribe themselves out of the situation like uh, WCCF Tech quoted Cage from the UK Play magazine, where seemingly attempted to cop out of his own creation by saying, I didn't write this game to deliver a message. I wanted to create a very emotional experience, and I want the player to feel something in Detroit. That's my goal as a creator. Different people will see different things in this game, and I'm totally happy about that. That's the nature of the beast, and I think it's great. I think that's a fine quote, because you're talking... Exactly, like you don't have to ha deliver a me or en endorse a message. Like I said, just because a creator ex explores themes doesn't necessarily mean that they're endorsing them. Many games did not see Detroit become human that way, especially during its trailer at E3 2016, where many felt that Cage was attempting to pull from controversies like Black Lives Matter and the migrant issue that was tumultuously taking Europe by storm. So there's loads of people going, we was cyborgs and shit. <laughs> My God. Antifa simulator. Uh, yeah, so that's the people that are kind of looking a bit too much into it. So essentially you have SJWs on one side claiming the, ge the game is bad for the child abuse angle, while on the other side you have anti-SJWs who likely won't touch the game for, prom I, I would say, promoting SJW propaganda. It's not promoting SJW. Like, it's fictional. At the end of the day, it doesn't look like Quantic Dreams will have much of a targeted demographic for Detroit. The SJW media will continue to criticise the game for the issues they view as problematic, and actual hardcore gamers see it as little more than propaganda. It makes you wonder who exactly is um, planning on buying the game other than Sony loyalists. Well, I'm excited for the game. And um, the, the themes that I'm getting from the trailers and the little... T, like TV spot bits online um, it seems like a really engaging story but these these normies so to speak these SJW game journalists that aren't actually gamers all of these non you know people that don't understand the medium I mean what was it on the Bleeding Cool article there's meanwhile the founder of the National Association of People Abused in Childhood Peter Sanders said abusers will get off on th this absolutely irritates me right abusers will get off on this stuff and the other thing we know beyond question is that videos um, games end up being played by children and scarily the proliferation of salacious and abusive images is actually encouraging violence and abuse citation fucking needed you don't partake in the abuse of the child. You are not in control of the father. You're in control of Kara, the android, the housemaid, robot. It's not um, encouraging abuse and violence. There's been research done that shows that violence in games or fictional media... Research shows that violence in media does not make you violent. And with that saying... Uh, end up being played by children. Yeah, this game is rated an 18. Will probably be rated an 18. Any parent stupid enough to not pay attention to the age rating and buying this for a child, you're a fucking irresponsible parent. Fucking stupid cunts.
Uh, here's another statement um, statement by David Cage in which uh, he defends that scene that can be summed up with the following quote. I try to tell a story that matters to me, that I find moving, interesting and exciting, and my role as a creator is to maybe deliver something that people don't expect. Would I be doing my job as a creator if I was making the game you want me to make? I don't think so. I'm creating something that I find moving and mean meaningful, and I think people should see the scene, play the game, and see it in context to really understand it. The rule I give myself is to never glorify violence, to never do anything gratuitous. It has to have a purpose, have a meaning, and create something that is hopefully, meaning, hopefully meaningful for people. I mean, in the trailer, it doesn't, sh it doesn't explain, it doesn't show the father kill the daughter. You hear. Like the camera is outside the house, you hear the child scream, and then the camera angle um, it switches, it cuts to the uh, the dad laying the daughter on the bed, and Cara the android cut, opens the door and comes through and sees what's happened. That's it. If if you chose not to take action, see on the one hand, like gamers aren't really going to choose the stay where you are, obey your master, stay in the kitchen. Did I just hear someone use a microaggression? Obey your master, stay in the kitchen. Obey your master, stay in the kitchen. Stay in the kitchen. In the, the, the living room or whichever room that was in the in the trailer. Uh, what gamer is really going to choose the other option? You know, choosing the option to stay. Game, video games are an artistic platform. They're an artistic art form. They're an art form. And, you know, other films have depicted similar scenes. But people keep going on about, oh, using it, the violence as marketing. Games, a lot of these games are trying to explore themes and show, and push the, you know, pushing the boundaries. Like, sometimes, yeah, make you feel uncomfortable. If art can do that, if art can make you experience an emotion, it succeeded. You know, art should be able to make you feel, you know, to make you feel something. Like Esther Ranson saying, like there's another quote of her saying, violence against children is not entertainment, it's not a game, it's a real nightmare for thousands of children who have to live through these kinds of scenarios. The makers of this game should be thoroughly ashamed. I think it's perverse. Who thinks beating a child is entertainment? See, it shows that she didn't watch the video. She just heard about it from other, from someone else who told that person, and someone told that other person, and someone told that other person who told other, and was told by another person. And do, you, do you see? Those other people, they haven't watched it. They haven't watched the video. They didn't get the con. They are hearing it out of context. They're just hearing the, oh, a child, child abuse in a video game. Like I said, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Oh my God, you can kill civilians in an airport. You can partake in a terrorist attack. Yeah, because you're an undercover. I chose not to shoot any of the civilians because the objective isn't to kill them. You can go follow through that entire section and just watch the, the terrorists you know obliterate people because you're trying to be undercover that got a load of controversy should activision feel ashamed for covering those these people do not understand the art form it's put me in a real bad mood reading this again that people that do not understand the medium so um so to dame esther ranson maybe do a bit more research hmm? before someone before you just listen to what someone told you. Oh, right. You don't understand. You obviously don't understand the art form. Maybe do some re research. Same goes to this uh, Tory MP, um, Tory MP Damien Collins. Maybe if you do some research into the game, actually watch the trailer. The trailer provides context. As someone who was physically abused as a child. I've moved on. I don't dwell on it. I think oh, that was just a part of my life. I'm no, I'm no longer in that toxic family anymore. You know, my dad left my stepmom. I'm still fine with these themes being explored in fictional medium, whether it be film, TV, movies, comics, games. I'm fine with it. And also, yeah, to my stepmom and stepsister Sue and Sarah. 
fuck you, you fat cunts. How's life treating you, hmm? Anyway. Sorry I'm not as energetic and and such in the video. Just, I just had to, to say this, but yeah, do all that like and subscribe stuff. You guys know what to do. Um, yeah, I'm Flatmaster. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.